guys, I'm Alana. This is Maudie. Hey, everybody. I pointed at him. You didn't see it. That was weird. Uh, this is ukulele. Yes. We got to play this last week. Uh, <laughs> this very, very exciting. Excited. Yeah. Um, so this is that we're not currently playing it live, but we are uh, going to talk over about eight minutes of yeah. uh, what we got to play, which is pretty. It's pretty much the opening of the game. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is basically right where you start off. Uh, there was there was an interaction with a guy called Trouser Snake that was at that door originally. Yeah. Uh, current favorite character. Actually, uh, his his name is just Trouser. Yeah, but he has a snake, so thus he's a trouser snake. Uh, he's so always just, on his phone. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> like most trouser snakes. What does that mean? Uh, so yeah, for those of uh, you who don't know, Ukulele is the uh, spiritual successor to the sort of 3D rare platformers of the N64 era, such yeah. as Banjo Kazooie, Tui, and, and DK64. It feels in gameplay 100% like a sequel. Um, yeah. I think people who don't understand that the dev team is literally comprised of the same people of X -Rare. will yeah. be like, this is a blatant banjo ripoff. Yeah. And I would say, that means they did a good job. That, yeah, you can't rip off what you created. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's everything from the music to the way, which is still Grant Kirkhope, the uh, to the way uh, Yuka and Layla control feels so much like the relationship between Banjo and yeah. Kazooie. And the way characters sound. Yeah, the way the uh, there's a hub world right here. You're in, uh, what's his name? Coco Beware. What was the bad guy's name? Uh, his name is uh, Capital B. Capital B. Yeah. I was almost Coco Beware. <laughs> <laughs> I actually kind of feel like uh, these two, even the dynamic they have, is just straight up like Banjo and Kazooie. And I really feel like they probably were like, hey, can we make Banjo and Kazooie 3? Yeah. And They're Microsoft like, were like, nah. No. Yes. So um, I feel like they probably tried because it's it's so, so similar. Yeah, so totally. These are pages. These are pages, which are sort of like the jiggy pieces yes. of uh, Banjo. And so you collect pages, and then you use them to open up worlds. Uh, and not only do you use them to unlock a world, but you can also pay more to uh, expand the world, which I think is a pretty I, interesting concept. Yeah, I think just once for each world. Yes, I believe each world is unlock has one unlock and then one uh, full-on expansion. Yeah, and this is the hub world that uh, this is in right now, but <laughs> even this, as you can see right here, has its own um, pages. Puzzles. Yeah, pages and puzzles. And, um, yeah, there's th lots of them. Yeah, and this one is uh, leaning heavily on one of the main mechanics, uh, which is uh, you... Use your tongue to lick various like bulbs, and yes. they each have different properties. So that one obviously was a flame property, uh, allows you to spit fire. But there's also ones that allow you to shoot water out of your mouth or to uh, throw little like snowballs. And uh, the little red pots on Yuka actually change colors depending on what you have absorbed. Yeah, at that like the time, which I love. scales, which I think is a really great yeah. touch. Um, the game just is also gorgeous. It's super Art. colorful and playful, and uh, the writing is really like we were actually laughing. While yeah, it. Uh, there were like innuendos in there. Yeah, there are a like, ton of double yeah. entendres. Yeah, and apparently they were semi intentional. Yeah. It's, it seems like someone on the dev team wrote it, and then the others just didn't realize that it was even meant to be a joke, and yeah. it just ships that way. And then yeah. they're like, wait, that's a sex thing? Yeah. Exactly. Apparently people didn't even put it together so with that, Trouser Snake, which I love. It's all, it's all a sex thing. It's always a sex um, thing. So this is the opening world. I believe this is before it's been fully expanded. Uh, one thing that we immediately noticed, being big, big Banjo fans, was just how huge the world is. Yeah, so that is uh, one of my few criticisms. Mm -hmm. uh, in a weird way, though, obviously, bigger always seems to mean better, and yeah. it, that applies to we a lot of games. We learned that from Trouser Snake. <sighs> So Go on. <laughs> uh, but in this case, I think with the way that the worlds are in Banjo, I feel like a little bit of personality is lost by these being so big. Yeah. Um, <gasps> what up, oh, Shovel Knight? It's Shovel Knight. Look at that nice boy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with the size being... Uh, we played the game for two hours and in, in two main worlds. It might have worlds. even been longer than that overall. Yeah, I guess it was. Yeah. Uh, but I never felt like... I don't feel like I know this opening world that well. It's hard to say because obviously we have huge amounts of nostalgia for Banjo Kazooie, sure, and I, I do for Tui as well. Yeah, um, and we've I mean I've, we've been playing Banjo Kazooie for the better part of twenty years. Right, and I've replayed them several yeah. times, so it's like we have them ingrained. But I really feel like these worlds are so much bigger that I can't immediately get familiar with them. Which, you know, I mean. A new example is I know the house in Resident Evil 7 like the back of my hand sure, yeah. from playing it once, and it's new, whereas yeah. this, it's still find quite hard to navigate. Yeah, um, and there is just a, there is a, just a wealth of things to do the second you jump into the world. There are so many NPCs to talk to, and abilities like to buy. Yeah, the NPCs are great. They yeah. all have great personality. And obviously here, it's like super cool that they teamed up uh, with the Shovel Knight crew mm -hmm. and were able to have this sort of quest where he sends you to the top of this tower. Um, which is actually like a pretty tough plat, a pretty tough and smart platforming challenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it has like some 
kind of time-based puzzle. Uh, yeah, physics-based really cool. stuff here. Yeah. Where you need to the sort physics of, feels yeah. great. Like yeah. honestly, that it, it feels so so good to play. So you'd say it's not basic physics. No, it's it's advanced physics. Advanced physics. Yeah. Uh, so again, the quills <laughs> that you collect are sort of the uh, the equivalent of um, the musical notes in banjo. Mm -hmm. You see here another type of the. Oh, look, yeah. You can see his little scales. I love that so much. Blue. That's super cool. So that pauses that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's super cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, even the the minor criticism of the world's feeling a little bit too large is really minor. Yeah. Uh, this absolutely feels like a banjo game, which is exactly what I wanted from it. Yeah, uh, totally. All and the characters are cool. The writing's great. Yeah, and the I music, feel like ooh. it... Uh, the music's really good, yeah. And I feel like it managed to avoid some of the trappings of late 3D platformers like uh, uh, Donkey Kong 64, which, in my opinion, wasn't as good as banjo because there was too many collectibles and too many playable characters and just like too much that you couldn't focus yeah whereas with this despite the fact that the worlds are really big and there's a lot to do it all sort of feels like it has a centralized goal of getting you uh pages and getting mm -hmm. you the quills that you can use to purchase uh, new abilities for yeah Chaser. uh and i mean there are a lot of uh different kinds of things that you can do <laughs> uh to get the pages like yeah. there's one that was a race there was like a, a cool minecart kind of platforming thing yep. in another level so there's a lot of different stuff you can do but yeah there's like bosses you fight there's errands you run for yeah for but characters. i think all of that stuff feels good and it's not overwhelming in any way there's, yeah, there's this one agree. cloud that you have to make pee yeah so, he really cool he's one. really gotta go and you gotta yeah. just get him to, f to flush it all out yeah. and you go swimming in the pee and that's a yeah that's it was a bit know, weird yeah. but, i like uh, these enemies these are cool there's these like sort of just like eyeballs that exist in the world and they, we've found them across the hub and across the different mm -hmm. worlds and on their own you can just hit them and they'll die but their thing is they will jump towards a nearby object and then like animate that object and so you're yeah. now dealing with a brand new enemy yeah it's like everything uh, is animated and objects that seem like they would never move basically do because of mm -hmm. this guy which I really yeah. like well, we helped out Shovel Knight to Shovel Knight yeah um, he's a real good boy. But yeah, this, he's a very good. He's a good yeah. dog. He is. Brent. Brent. Uh, yeah, but this is uh, you know it was it was uh, super exciting to be able to go hands on with this for a couple hours um, leading up to its I believe April twelfth release. That sounds right. Uh, release <laughs> releasing on uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. And we don't Nintendo know Switch. if Switch is. Uh, going to be at launch. No, we don't have a date for that just yet. Yeah, but uh, yeah, super excited. And this is sort of the resurgence of the 3D platformer with uh, like this in Psychonauts 2 and yeah. Mario Odyssey. And, and I think if you like Banjo, you are undoubtedly going to like this game. You're going to like this. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited. It's exactly what it intends <laughs> to be. So uh, we will absolutely play more of it for you guys as soon as we can. And we'll be talking about it on all the podcasts and everything like that. So uh, stay tuned for more.